There are five main branches of engineering, mechanical, electrical, software, chemical, and civil. So in this video, we'll compare the two most popular ones, mechanical and electrical. If you're deciding between these two majors, or maybe you're just curious to know a little bit more about each, then this video is for you. To really illustrate the difference between mechanical and electrical engineering, let's look at the engineering inside of my phone or in my car and compare that to the human body. The heart, your muscles, skin, and skeleton is like mechanical engineering, whereas your brain or your nervous system or external sensors like your eyes, nose, or ears are like electrical engineering. Now, there may be a childish way of looking at the difference between mechanical and electrical engineering, but it's basically all I'm trying to say is mechanical is things that you can really see and it's easy to visualize how they work, well, it's electrical is a lot more difficult to visualize. Mechanical engineering gives you a pretty broad foundation in mechanical design, where you learn things about mechanics, manufacturing, fluid power, thermodynamics, etc. But that's a dictionary definition. To simplify it, if you love things that move, then mechanical engineering is for you. This program will give you the tools you need to be able to design things like an iPhone, a keyboard, or headphones. In first year, as you can see, it's pretty general. You have lots of courses in calculus, linear algebra, physics, and chem. You're gonna notice that the degree is very focused towards calculus and physics through all four or five years. The types of jobs you can expect to get after you graduate first include product design engineering, basically means designing how something like this phone would look like, what material it would be made out of, and what manufacturing process we're gonna use to actually make it. Second, we have manufacturing engineering. You become an expert at predicting when things will fail and how to avoid these failures. You really focus on balancing high quality products while keeping the cost relatively low. Third, we have reliability engineering. You work on making sure that a product can actually function without failure by designing and doing tests. You're essentially testing how reliable a product is. And fourth, we have HVAC, where you work on maintaining a comfortable room temperature for buildings, homes, and cars. The main courses that make up this major and the ones that you're gonna learn about in your upper year so you can land mechanical engineering jobs are first, statics, which is the physics behind things that don't move. For example, looking at the forces that a bridge or a building experiences and making sure that it doesn't collapse. Two, we have dynamics, which is the physics behind things that do move. In it, you're basically gonna learn about how all these different complicated systems move, why they move in certain ways, and examples would be like a pulley system or a really complicated gear system. Third, we have fluid mechanics, where you learn how to control things like air and water. It's literally like calculus on steroids because there's just so much math involved. This is a course that helps you understand how the brakes in your car work, how you can make cars or planes more aerodynamic, or how the fluid system in your house work. Fourth, we have thermodynamics, where you learn how to control and manage heat. For example, how can you take advantage of heat to design a car engine or a plane engine? Fifth, we have mechanical design, which is probably one of the most important courses in mechanical engineering, because when you're interviewing for mechanical engineering jobs, a lot of the interview questions come from this course. For example, understanding the difference between several materials and picking the best one for a particular application is stuff they're gonna learn in this course and you're expected to answer in a job interview. You may also take a few electrical or software courses in your mechanical engineering undergrad, really depending on your university. Moving on, electrical engineering deals with things like electricity, circuits, and electromagnetism. Think wiring, sensors, boards, etc. That's basically kind of what composes electrical engineering. Electrical engineers will build electrical devices like motors or navigation systems. For example, an electrical engineer will focus on the circuits and wiring that goes inside of this iPhone to make it work. Also, how this phone will communicate with other phones is the responsibility of electrical engineers. They basically use radio frequencies to be able to communicate with each other, but you're gonna learn all about that in one of your electrical engineering courses. In your first year, these are the types of courses you're expected to take. Again, similar to mechanical engineering, we have physics, linear algebra, calculus, and a basic programming course. But we definitely have way more electricity and circuits courses here. We even have discrete math, which is something that mechanical engineers don't really need to do. The types of jobs you can expect to get after you graduate include, first, hardware engineering. You design and test physical electronic components that make up any computer system. Second, we have electrical designers that design the circuitry that will allow electricity to flow through your system. Third, we have programmers who write and test code. Fourth, we have firmware engineers who basically take electric signals and work on converting these signals into actions that a computer can do. The main courses that make up this major and the ones that you're gonna have to take in your upper years of electrical engineering that will help you land electrical engineering jobs first include electronic circuits, we're gonna learn how to analyze circuits and you're gonna learn about transistors, which are a really important part of electronic circuits. Second, we have data structures and algorithms. We're gonna learn how to collect and organize data to make a computer do what you want it to do. Third, we have signals. You see the voltage of your electronics can be expressed using signals and this course will teach you how to analyze them. 
For if you have communication systems, we're going to learn about how all these different electronic devices use radio frequencies to communicate wirelessly with one another. For if we have electromagnetism, which is the physics behind magnets and electricity, and how all these different magnetic waves interact with our environment. Now that we know a little bit more about each, I think electrical engineering is a little bit harder than mechanical engineering, and let me explain why. If you remember earlier, I said that mechanical engineering is like your heart, skeleton, skin, and muscles. Whereas electrical engineering is more similar to your brain, nervous system, ears, or eyes. To elaborate on that, mechanical engineering is like a product's body, whereas electrical engineering is like a product's soul. Which is actually what makes electrical engineering harder than mechanical engineering. Electrical engineering is kind of more like mystical or magical because you can't really see how things work or how things move. You can't see electrons moving through wires. You can't see radio signals traveling through the air. Instead, you just have to understand how to use the equipment that can basically detect the electrons and the signals. And you have to be able to understand the physics behind them without ever seeing them. In a way, with electrical engineering, you're kind of just believing in the unseen. This isn't as true in mechanical engineering because in mechanical engineering, you deal with things like fluid moving through pipes or engines, or maybe you're dealing with forces or torques acting in a complicated system. These are all things that you can see and touch. For example, let's look at a simple explanation of how cell phones work when I make a call. First, when I speak into a cell phone, a microphone turns my voice into electric signals. Second, a microchip inside of my phone will modulate a radio wave using this electric signal that came from my voice. Third, this radio wave will then travel at the speed of light to the nearest cell tower. Fourth, the tower will then send my voice to the person that I was calling. You see, I get this explanation, but how does it actually do that? Understanding how the highs and lows of my voice turns into the peaks and troughs of electric signals is just difficult to visualize. But seeing fluid move through a pipe is a lot simpler to understand since we've seen it before and we can easily visualize it so the physics behind it just isn't as complicated. Now that we have a basic understanding of each program, let's talk about their similarities and differences. Mechanical engineering is more concerned with machines and how efficient they are, whereas electrical engineering is more concerned with circuits, electricity, and power generation systems. Mechanical engineering is less abstract because you can see what you're actually studying, whereas electrical engineering is more abstract because you're studying things you can't see and it's hard to visualize things like waves moving through the air. Mechanical engineering is a slightly older discipline than electrical engineering, but electrical engineering developed really, really quickly with the introduction of electricity and all of its laws. Electrical engineering is also a bit more theoretical and can involve a little bit more math than mechanical engineering. Now, mechanical and electrical engineering are both really good professions with similar job prospects, but electrical engineering is kind of like the bridge between mechanical engineering and computer science. That being said, we also know that computer science has crazy demand with jobs and pays really, really high. Now, because electrical engineering is closer to computer science, it can pay a little higher than mechanical engineering. So if you're looking for more pay, then EE might be a better option than ME. But honestly, if pay is your number one priority, then you really shouldn't be watching this video and you should just be pursuing CS and not mechanical or electrical engineering. Now, if you're trying to decide which one to pursue or which one would be better for you, I want you to look back at your high school physics courses. If you remember in high school physics, we learned several topics like kinematics, dynamics, energy, momentum, electricity, magnetism, electromagnetic radiation, and waves. If you found things like kinematics, dynamics, energy, and momentum more enjoyable and more interesting to you, then mechanical engineering may be the better choice for you. On the other hand, if you found things like electricity, magnetism, and waves to be more enjoyable, then electrical engineering may be a better option for you. However, if you're like, I loved absolutely everything I learned in physics, both the mechanical and electrical aspects, then honestly, I just say that mechatronics engineering may be a better option for you in that case. It encompasses both, so if your school offers it, then just go for that instead of mechanical or electrical engineering. But if you're still not sure, let's look at some career projects for both mechanical and electrical engineers in various fields. For example, let's say you're interested in working with EV companies like Rivian, Tesla, or Lucid. Electrical engineers can work on the autopilot system of EVs by adding sensors or working on the wiring harness, or even working on the code that instructs a vehicle to move based on input from sensors. Electrical engineers can also work with the battery or the power electronics involved in a car. On the other hand, mechanical engineers will need to be more focus on the material selection and the manufacturing process of all the parts that go in their car. They can also use their knowledge of fluid mechanics to work on the car's aerodynamics. But maybe you're interested in working with consumer electronics, and when I say consumer electronics, I'm basically referring to a device that you use every day that uses electricity. That includes things like your phone, your mouse, or a wearable like your smartwatch. If we look at this mouse, a mechanical engineer will be in charge of the material it's made up of, 
how it will be manufactured, where the cuts of the mouse buttons will be, how big the button is, or even the knurling that's on the scroll wheels. On the other hand, electrical engineers will need to work on its PCB, any sensors that this mouse will have, as well as its Bluetooth connectivity. Even something as simple as this light that flashes is the responsibility of an electrical engineer. If there's one thing I want you to get out of this video is that you honestly just can't go wrong with either. They both pay well and have really good job prospects. However, do realize that in the real world, when you're working on engineering projects, things aren't as black and white as they may seem. For example, I studied mechanical engineering, but I had to work on projects as well that basically involved me using a lot of electrical knowledge like my happy project, where I built a device that tracks your pee to give you information about your health. I had to use a bunch of sensors, wires, an Arduino, and a bit of coding as the electrical aspect of this project. I also had to use my knowledge of fluid mechanics and material selection as part of the mechanical aspect of the project. So just because you picked mechanical engineering doesn't mean you're not going to get the opportunity to do electrical work. And just because you picked electrical engineering doesn't mean you're not going to get the opportunity to do mechanical work. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. For more, check out this video where I show you how much math there truly is in engineering or check out this video where I compare all engineering programs to one another. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!